Comedy Now, Uncensored, starring Levi McDougal. Please welcome Levi McDougal. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm Levi McDougall, as you just heard. And uh, one thing I, I did want to mention here off the top, actually, before I start, is that uh, I'm going to be doing my show tonight in dedication uh, to my mom. So uh, mom, this one's for you. Uh, she's not dead, just incredibly <laughs> tall. Just tall. <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> hey, Levi. <laughs> Have a good show. Done. <laughs> so, uh, I just, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I am going to be extra careful, too, with what I say tonight, because uh, I can see that there are some people here. And, uh, and it's, it's not really the kind of audience I usually connect with, just uh, in general. We'll give it a go. And, uh, it's nice, eh? Everybody... Everybody gathered around watching. This, uh, this actually reminds me of when I used to put on these little comedy shows in my grandma's basement. Uh, my grandma lives right above this studio, so <laughs> it's actually it's a lot like this. I think about it. I just <laughs> keep it down, Nana. <laughs> so we have to say if she starts dancing, just pick off your clogs. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, sometimes when I'm uh, sometimes when I'm happy to see people, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a banana in my pocket. Uh, then, then, then if someone says, "Hey, is that a banana in your pocket?" or are you just happy to see me? Well, I just say both. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hungry? as potassium. <laughs> so, uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to just share something with you. Here, I feel we've known each other long enough. But uh, see, the, the first time I ever had sex, uh, it, was, it was actually very romantic. So, yeah, I know I've heard a lot of people, not so much, but for me, it was very romantic. I'd put, I'd put candles all over the dash. So, <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Smell of pine dangling from the mirror. And um, uh, afterwards, uh, afterwards the melted wax took a while to clean up. And um, anyway, God, oh, sorry. Anyway, that's the reason I was almost late tonight. But um, <laughs> made it. Made it off. <laughs> so uh, have you ever uh, have you ever done something, and then uh, afterwards think, man, what? What was the point of that? <laughs> oh, was, hey. <laughs> Me too. And, um, oh, and I, I just wanted to warn you as well, something I just found out, uh, that I have to be very careful with this shirt I'm wearing, because I guess uh, you can actually see my nipples. <laughs> um, you can see my nipples if, if I do this. So, <laughs> please. I didn't, um, I didn't know that when I put it on this morning. I should have should have checked the label. Yes. But, uh, and I, I apologize, by the way, to anyone who had their eyes open when I did that. <laughs> but uh, I'd also, I don't know if you can tell, but I'd also plan on wearing a different pair of jeans for you guys tonight. But uh, what, what happened at the last minute, though, I got this big ink stain on the other pair because, see, I, I had this pen in my pocket Right, and then like sat down really fast, and the pen, of course, just pierced my scrotum, <laughs> right? <laughs> which was which was full of ink. So it just, just got everywhere. <laughs> Ruined a really good pair of jeans. 
need to, I need to come up with a different place to store my ink. I think. It's just, you know, right, right now there may be one very offended woman watching, just saying, damn you, my breasts are full of whiteout. Uh, you're, you're, you're my natural enemy. <laughs> And one day we'll meet on a field of paper and look at it. <laughs> oh, a battle cry. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm just easier to get along with than most, but I don't think there's anybody I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. I, oh, at, least, at least jab at you with the tip. I, you know I care. This is the way I was raised. But uh, I should tell you, when I'm up here tonight, it's, it's going to be very much like a giant fireworks display. Okay, you know, at times, you're going to be dazzled and amazed by my vibrant colors and fantastic shapes, sure. And then at other times, my words might just fizzle quietly through the air, fade away. But uh, all in all, I guarantee it'll end in a poof, spectacular finale. Okay, or go horribly wrong and burn one of your eyes out. And so, it's just the risk we take at this festival of lights. But uh, I, uh, I have a problem that, uh, huh, you have more than one, buddy. But uh, I have a problem that I think a lot of guys have, but uh, I never hear anybody talk about it. Uh, see, I have trouble peeing at, uh, at the urinal. When there's another guy standing right beside me, just leaning over, pinching the end of my penis. I just... Like, it's like nothing is coming out of there, buddy. And I'm thinking of waterfalls and all the tricks. With, huh. <laughs> who, who was that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Such cold hands. <laughs> but uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes when I'm at the grocery store, uh, what I like to do is just put my pants down around my ankles, right? And then I find someone that works there, and I ask them where the toilet paper aisle is. <laughs> just, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> my cab is waiting. But, uh, I, I had something happen a little while ago that um, I'm still feeling a bit guilty about. I thought I'd just get off my chest and then move on. Um, see, I was walking down the sidewalk, right, and there was a couple walking towards me holding hands, and I did something to them. Okay, I'm not proud of it, but I did something to them. And then afterwards, I tried to get out of it by saying that I thought they had shouted, Red Rover, Red Rover, we call Levi over. <laughs> They claim they didn't. I don't know. I know they had a real strong grip. It was just close lined. So I had to join their chain. But uh, I, I almost caught a purse snatcher earlier today. I thought that was exciting. I, uh, oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I saw the guy, he uh, grabbed this old lady's purse and then just took off, right? So I started course, just, <laughs> just swinging my arms in the air really fast. And, oh, he got away. Um, I probably should have ran. <laughs> you know, old lady was pretty pissed off. <laughs> took my wallet. There's a, there's a little library near where I live, and I was walking out of it the other day, and there was this dog sitting there with his leash you know, tied to one of the signposts, just very patient. And, uh, and as I walked out, he looked up and saw me, and I saw him. And then he did this, this sort of little kind of wave. Right? So that was neat, and I, I waved back. Right? Just a 
be polite. And then as I was waving though, I noticed that he was actually looking behind me. And I glanced back and noticed his owner walking up and he'd actually been waving at her. It was embarrassing. You know, I tried to make it look like, oh. But he knew. He knew I knew, so. Huh. And we're going to the library. So. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of people when they walk their dog, uh, they bring plastic bags with them, right? But see, I've never done that. But what I do is I just bring a twig, right? And then, then if my dog happens to take a dump, I use the twig to carve the piece of poo into the shape of a pine cone. Right? <laughs> Because no one minds stepping on a pine cone. And I just, ah, oh, gee, oh, hmm, pine cone. Was, oh, honey, look at, the, what is that? It was a pine cone. Well, it, oh, the, it sounds like poo, I know. But I don't, it was a pine cone, all right. Well, great. You know what this means? What? With shit trees. What? Shit trees? How do you, you know that? Well, because the pine cone, well, great. There, there goes the property value. So uh, I was at a party uh, a little while ago, and uh, this girl walked up to me, and just out of nowhere, she said that she thought I had very kind eyes, right? So I thought that was nice, and uh, I thanked her for the compliment, right? But then I did warn her that they probably would look very different if I were drowning puppies, right? <laughs> I don't know. I just I assume, you know, I imagine pupils would be much more intense. <laughs> Uh, all around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. <laughs> but I digress. Um, they have a, so they have they have whitening toothpaste now, right? That guarantees three shades brighter, right? And they also have tanning beds that will make you three shades darker. Right? Now, if I can just find a balance between the two, I will become invisible. If I figure out how to do it, I'll tell you guys. But I uh, won't know where my voice is coming from. <laughs> so one thing that's always bothered me is, uh, is when I'm drinking milk, right? And someone makes me laugh so hard that milk comes out of my nose. I hate that. So what I've done as a solution is I just stop drinking milk. Right? So now when I laugh really hard, my bones snap. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a trade-off. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but with milk, I should say, I do find cows to be very fascinating creatures. Because right? if you think they're these animals right, that just walk around all day totally unaware that their bodies contain liters and liters of a delicious, refreshing beverage. Okay? I mean, almost no other animal can claim that, with, with the exception, of course, of the legendary Tang donkeys. <laughs> donkeys that make tang. That's, that's where that old saying comes from, why buy the donkey when you get the tang for free. <laughs> you know, it might, um, it might seem to you like a lot of my jokes are unrelated, but uh, I just wanted to assure you that if you were to just step way back and, and view them from space, you would notice that they're actually in the shape of a sailboat. Yeah. Just, just, just a little something extra I threw in for you guys. Yeah. That, that tang donkey stuff, that was the mast. That's why, that's why I leaned into it. Yeah. So, you know, if I had been born Chinese, uh, my parents would have been very surprised. <laughs> okay. Or very Chinese, <laughs> as well, <laughs> because of genetics. But uh, I think it's a bad sign whenever somebody says, hey, I'm not racist, knock on wood. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, it's leaving too much to chance. And, I, and, and you do have to be so careful with what you say, because 
You know, I mean, words, words can be misused and misunderstood, but words can also be hippopotamus or notwithstanding. <laughs> right? Depends on how you spell it. <laughs> but, uh, I, remember, I remember how surprised I was in school when I first found out that coal comes from the fossilized remains of dinosaurs and other animals that had once been alive. And uh, I just thought that was crazy, because, you know, if dinosaurs could look into the future right, and see that their remains were being used to heat houses and run factories, well, they'd probably have no idea what they were looking at. <laughs> It's just, it's a, such small brains. Yeah. Trouble understanding time windows. Uh, you know, if I were to use my magic powers to turn a sparrow into a rock that I could then pick up and throw at the neck of a passing ostrich, I would still be killing two birds with one stone. Not in the way that it's usually done. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I think I think if ostriches could fly, I bet you a lot more people would know what an emu was. Okay? Look out! There'd be a new largest flightless bird in the world <laughs> in town. Sometimes, uh, sometimes when I'm with my friends, uh, what I'll do is I'll start bad-mouthing Einstein, right? You know, just, just ripping into him, right? And it, it always hits that awkward moment where everyone goes quiet and I have to go, what? What? It, oh, he's standing right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> and he, he usually isn't, but uh, just imagine him back there mocking me with his theories. You know? I think, uh, I think my two biggest flaws are, uh, one, that I sometimes forget that I've said something even right after I've said it, and two, that I sometimes forget that I've said something even right after I've said it, and two, that I sometimes forget that I've said something even right after I've said it, and two, that I sometimes forget that I've said something even right after I've said it, but not always. Um, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest one at rhyming? <laughs> I, uh, like out of everyone I know, I including me. Is it me? It's me! It's me! It's me. Uh, as I suspected. Um, so I used to be in a band. Uh, I don't talk about it a lot, but it's true. I used to be in a van. And then I got kicked out of the band because, uh, yeah, the other members all got together and fired me because they said my sound was too kick-ass. Right? Uh, I remember as I stormed out of the room, I shouted, fine, let's see how well Brooks and Dunn and McDougal does without me. <laughs> that was also the day I left Texas or Tejas, as it's known in Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. Where the X's sound like H's, and the H's sound like H's. <laughs> Mexico. Don't drink the water. <laughs> Sometimes our T's also sound like H's. See so that? That last joke actually kind of intrigued me a bit, and um, I'm wondering if I could just learn a little bit more about it, uh, if, if that's possible. <clears throat> the previous joke was written using the Wallbaum font, a font created in 1810 by German punch cutter J.E. Wallbaum. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, uh, I was, I was thinking about how lucky my girlfriend is, uh, since I don't have one. Uh, she's, she's probably a better person for it. Somewhere out there.
But uh, see, is it so wrong to always look at the start of a new relationship as being the beginning of the end of that relationship? <laughs> I do that a lot. I, I think what is, I think I'm still just waiting for that right girl to come along. You know, someone who's the perfect combination of both looks and beauty. Just all together. <laughs> You know, I remember this one time I was with a girl and I just had to kind of step back and say, you know, oh, wow. And, uh, and she said, hey, I'm over here. And, uh, and I said, yeah, but your cello is over here. Yeah. It's just, uh, oh, God. such a beautiful instrument. I really learned to play. But uh, I've, uh, I've, ha I've had a few girls uh, break up with me, though, and use that old line, uh, it's not you, it's me, and, uh, and more specifically, how me hates you and wishes you were dead. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so still friends? But uh, I've, heard, I've heard that a lot of guys uh, are embarrassed to go and buy condoms at the drugstore because they think that the cashier is going to know that they're using them for water balloons. <laughs> So that's, that's why I always make up this crazy story about how I'm going to wear them during intercourse. Uh, it just throws her off the trail. But uh, apparently a lot of guys uh, complain about how, how tricky condoms are. And I guess I can see where they're coming from because there's really, there's so many steps, right? I mean, like first, first you got to unwrap them. Hey, I mean, then and you got to like unroll them, right? And then and you got to go find someone to have sex with. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's, always, it's always the trickiest part I find. <laughs> it doesn't show you how to do that on the box. Yeah. Should have done that first. Now I just look silly. <laughs> but I, I, always, I always thought it would be easier for guys if they would just invent a birth control gum, right? <laughs> then, then right before sex, you just pop a piece of gum into your penis. Right? Hey, just, just, just let him chew on that for a little while. Right? Maybe, maybe, maybe until he's blown a nice big bubble. Right? And then and you just pop it and your penis is instantly covered. Yeah. A thin, protective, spearmint flavored layer. It will not stick to most dental. <laughs> but uh, I do. Uh, I do have my own. I do have my own technique uh, for foreplay. And, uh, you can feel free to use it yourself. It's. Uh, it's a little something that I call the move. Okay. Now it's the move where I rub uh, each of her nipples with two fingers like this. <laughs> Possibly the main reason I'm still single. <laughs> it's so hard to find a girl whose breasts are two feet apart. <laughs> I know, she's out there. She's looking. Maybe working at a factory making abnormally large muffin tins. <laughs> Try, trying on giant glasses for people whose nipples have astigmatism. <laughs> but, uh... I think I, I think I do agree uh, with the old cliche about sex because, you know, sex is a lot like pizza, right? I mean, even when it's bad, it's still really hard to get a refund if you've eaten some of it. I have very bad balance, so uh, I, I tend to stumble a lot when I'm on the subway. Like, every time it moves, you know, forward, back, side to side. And I, I feel very much like a newborn colt, right? You know, with the stumbling and that one time that mother horse came up and started licking my face. It was soothing. Uh, I don't know how she got on the subway. Uh, someone's not watching the ranch. But uh, one thing I've learned one thing I've learned is that 
is that if you don't want people to sit beside you on the subway, all you have to do is invite people to sit beside you on the subway. <laughs> Just, hey, hey, over here, over here, here, here. Why are you all over there? <laughs> now I have to stretch out. Or, or what I like to do, I like to just sit down beside someone and I'll wait a couple minutes. And then I turn to them and say, hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? It's funny because they usually aren't. They're like, they're just, most of the time. But there's these guys uh, that work on the subway and their job is to just poke their head out of the window on the train at every stop and make sure people don't get stuck in the doors. Right, so what I like to do is just stand on the platform and then right when the train is about to pull away, I lock eyes with the guy and I say, Father? <laughs> and then he's gone. <laughs> for, for the rest of the day, he's got to drive around trying to remember every lady out there he may have impregnated. <laughs> uh, <gasps> Rhonda. <laughs> so uh, I thought uh, I thought I would just uh, use this to kind of mix things up a bit for you guys. <laughs> um, so it's supposed to be bad luck to open an umbrella inside your house, right? but I think it's worse luck if it's raining inside your house. <laughs> Huh? So, say just, just open that sucker up. The, bad luck's already there. There's actually a second version of that joke with, uh, with the alternate ending. I'll share with you now. So it's supposed to be bad luck to open an umbrella inside your house. But I think it's worse luck if you open it inside your cat. <laughs> just, just bad luck for the cat. <laughs> you know, um, uh, chairs, uh, stools, uh, horses, none of them are safe when I'm in a sitting mood. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a, I'm not really that nostalgic, but, uh, man, I used to be. <laughs> Back in the day. I've, uh, I've always had a pretty optimistic outlook on life, and uh, I, really, I really like that test that you're supposed to use to find out whether or not you are an optimist. Right? Like, you're supposed to look at a glass of water, right? and then if you see it as being half full, that means you're an optimist. But, see, that can also mean you're a pessimist if the glass of water is actually totally full. Bring it down a bit. And then, and then if that full glass of water is later found out to be vodka, well then, then that means uh, whee, that, that's strong drink. And, uh, and, uh, and no wonder you can't tell how full the glass is, you're drunk. And, uh, but I think, uh, I think there is a, a danger in being overly optimistic. Right? Like if you if you look at a flag hanging at half mast, you shouldn't really see it as being halfway up. <laughs> someone, someone might be dead. Okay. It might be, but, but not necessarily. Sometimes when you see a flag at half mast, it just means that the guy at the bottom isn't done yet. That is just still pulling. And, um, or, or the guy at the bottom might have been the one that died. Yeah. So just halfway through the job, he just <laughs> collapsed. Yeah. Last thing he did was look up and say, oh, fitting. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people are uncomfortable with jokes about death. Um, but I'd just like to point out that, you know, unless we start joking around about it, people are going to keep dying. Yeah. Most likely. Remember, uh... I remember the last time I ever saw my grandfather. We, uh, we were sitting out on his porch looking up at the stars. 
And that's when he told me that he had this theory that every star in the sky was a person who had once passed away. Right? And I remember as he finished saying this, I noticed a new star appear overhead. And that's when I turned to my right, and there was my grandfather, just kind of slumped over, his eyes closed, looking so peaceful, with his hands just locked around the neck of a dead hobo. <laughs> <laughs> I always had to prove his theories. <laughs> it's just, Grandpa. So, uh, so that was the last time I saw him. They took him away the next day. Yeah. I remember the, the headline read, Hobo Killer Found. Grandson Collects Reward. So, uh, so that was the same summer I got a new bike. <laughs> My aunt actually uh, once married a Japanese hobo. And, um, yeah, they called him Hobo-san. He ate nothing but baked beans and sushi. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes a joke doesn't get a laugh. That's true, it happens, it's okay. But uh, it does make me wonder if I should have even set it free in the first place, right? Because, you know, it was raised in captivity, in my mind, where it learned no natural defenses against the outside world. And yet, I come up here and I just set it free. You know, I say, go. You were born to run wild. <laughs> and my joke, it usually walks away from me for a bit. But then it, it walks back and it looks up at me and says, but Levi, I want to stay here with you. <laughs> and I say, no, you're, you were born to run wild. Just, just trust your instincts. You'll be okay. Now go. And he, he looks at me and says, but I want to stay. So I shout, no! You can't. You don't belong here. And you know what? I don't even love you. I never did. Now go! And then it runs away. My joke runs away crying. And I turn my back. And I don't look back. You know why? Because I don't want it to see me crying. Because you know what? I did love it. But I set it free into the jungle where you people eat it alive. And I actually have a few more that I think you're really gonna enjoy. <laughs> I, uh, I got a nosebleed uh, just a little while ago, and I used to get them all the time, like when the air was really dry. Uh, but I hadn't had one for a while, so I got a nosebleed. I'm trying to remember you know, what to do. And uh, so I was like, oh, get some Kleenex, get Kleenex to stop it. But then I, I couldn't get Kleenex because uh, the guy that gave me the nosebleed was still punching my face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he heard me ask for Kleenex. <laughs> In all fairness, I wasn't really enunciating. But, uh, but, uh, but I, I don't get in a lot of fights. Uh, I think for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I have a very intimidating stature. And, uh, and, and two, I have my own, I have my own fighting style that tends to discourage a fight before it begins. Uh, see, a lot of people, when they get in a fight, like, they'll do like this, right, or this. But what I do is, see, I do this. Right? And then I slip on my falcon glove. Right? And I say, what? And then Desmond, my falcon, who'd been circling overhead, well, he swoops down with his claws and he 
he picks the other guy up by the shoulders, and carries him off to the nest where he'll be used to feed the young. I just find it works better than this. And, and, and the glove was just for show. But, uh, but I remember the first time I ever got kicked in the nards. And uh, I, was, I was actually very thankful. Uh, see, nards are what I call those small metal shields that I wear in front of my testicles. Uh, and, uh, they absorb most of the impact. So, whew. So it's nards. Good investment. But if I can give you any fighting advice, it would be this. Uh, if you ever get into a sword fight in the winter, don't lick the other guy's sword. Okay? Yeah. Because your tongue will stick to the metal. And that's it's just the kind of advantage an opponent is waiting for. Uh, they'll use the tongue on sword maneuver. It's one of the first they learn. So I, I used to tell, uh, I used to tell only really sad jokes, but it gets too distracting with everyone waving their lighter around in the air, <laughs> trying to sing along. So I was at my, uh, I was at my friend's place just a little while ago, and I, I like to hang out at his apartment a lot because I find it keeps my place much cleaner. <laughs> and, uh, just fewer, fewer dirty dishes to do. But uh, while I was leaving his place, his, his girlfriend was just arriving. So I turned to my friend and I said, don't worry, your secret is safe with me. <laughs> uh, it's nice, because it gives them something to talk about after I'm gone. <laughs> I don't like using the washroom at my friend's place because he has a very small home and I, I'm aware that he can probably hear me moving around in there, right? So then I have to go through all the trouble of making sure to you know, run the taps really loudly and then splash water on the bar of soap and, and rumple up the towel to make it look like it was used. Okay? Sometimes I think maybe it'd just be easier to actually wash my hands. But then really, where's the challenge? You know? Twitter's way out. But um, uh, my apartment, uh, where I am, uh, it has very thin walls. And uh, how thin are they? Very. And uh, <laughs> you know, I can hear my, my neighbor sneezing a lot uh, from next door. And so I like to pretend that I'm living in old Berlin, right up against the wall, and my neighbor on the other side is allergic to communism. <laughs> uh, just yell, bless you, bless you. Just Take antihistamine until democracy arrives. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, Gesundheit. Uh, I, uh, I, I think a good way to find out whether or not you have mice in your apartment is just to walk around all the time in an elephant costume. <laughs> uh, and just, just monitor the way you're feeling. Huh? Yeah. A little nervous? A little, a little skittish? Well, might be mice. Or, or you might just be worried that the neighbors can see in the window. And, uh, he's doing it again. What? He's got the costume on. Well, stop spying on him and help me get this poo off my shoe. But, uh, I, uh, I read in a book, though, that uh, for every one mouse you see in your home, there's like 15 or 16 more you don't see. Right? And I think that's fascinating, because that means that if you manage to capture just one mouse and like, put them in a jar, well, now you've suddenly got like 16 or 17 mice in there. Yeah. You know, you can just see one. Well, just running around. Just weird they don't bump into each other. <laughs> must, must have sonar. But uh, of course, managing to capture mouse in the first place is, is very difficult to do, and I find for me, I never know what to use as bait in the mouse traps, right? Like, I don't like to use cheese because it dries out too quickly, right? But I don't like to use peanut butter, right, in case one of the mice has a nut allergy. It could <laughs> lead to a lawsuit. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. But I, I, thought I, would, I thought I would do for you now uh, a portrayal. 
to change it up here. And uh, so this is, this is my portrayal of a, a model from the Gap. Okay, so this is, this is a model from the Gap the day he just snaps. Okay, he's, he's had enough. He's gonna, he's gonna follow his own path. So this is a, a Gap model the day everything changes. Okay, I'm just gonna put this over here in case it gets too crazy. For my next portrayal, okay, this is this is a guy who is occasionally on fire. Okay. <laughs> this, this guy who's occasionally on fire. Okay, here goes. Okay, here goes. Okay, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> here. Okay, um, sorry, I was, <laughs> huh. so uh, when I was in grade four, uh, uh, we had this one day where everyone gets assigned a locker, right, and you had to pick a locker, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I've, uh, I've, also, I've also been working on some of the more uh, traditional impressions, right? Because I know it's important to have an appreciation of the classics. So um, now for the, the first in my, in my series of classics. This is, uh, hope you recognize it. This is Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah. Here we are aboard the old Red October. <laughs> Fine ship. Nice. nice. Whoa, now I'm Bond, James Bond. How did that happen? Oh, here, Junior, give me your hand. Because I'm Indiana Jones's father, and I'm also Sean Connery. Okay. Now for uh, for the second in the series. Uh, this is this is my cousin Bradley. Okay. okay, and and for for those of you who don't know him, he has that that crazy annoying high pitched voice that uh, that I think has annoyed us all at the family gatherings. So this is cousin Bradley. Well, hey there, Levi. Oh. And uh, hey, ouch, ouch, Levi, stop. Why are you always pulling my hair at these family reunions? <laughs> no. St stop it or I'll tell my mom. My mom, who's your aunt? Because I'm your cousin Bradley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now, now for the, the final in my trilogy of classics. Uh, this is, hope you know him, uh, Jack Nicholson. Okay. <laughs> Some, some, uh, some final facts about me here. Um, uh, my biggest comedic influence growing up was uh, the rock band Aerosmith. <laughs> and, um, I know, I just, I just mention it because really, how else would you know? Mm. Um, 
what else was I going to talk about? Um, oh, I know, I want to just take a moment here actually to kind of just sort of step away from the comedy and discuss how important I feel it is that parents read to their children. Because, you know, it really is one of those things <laughs> that is easy to underestimate, but can, can instill a love of literature that your children will appreciate for years to come. Thanks. Oh. Thank you. Uh. You guys, uh, you've, been, you've been fantastic tonight, and uh, if I can leave you with anything from what I've said, uh, let it be this. Dream as though you will live forever. Live as though you will die today. Die <laughs> as though you had been dreaming earlier <laughs> that you might live forever, although knowing that you had actually been living as if you might die today. <laughs> if you can. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Levi McDougall.